The Lifestylist. Episode 111, featuring Allison Charles. I'm Luke Story, a former celebrity fashion stylist and founder of School of Style. For the past 20 years, I've been relentlessly dedicated to my deepest passion, designing the ultimate lifestyle based on the most powerful principles of health and spirituality. The Lifestylist Podcast is a show dedicated to sharing my discoveries and the experts behind them with you. Today's show is brought to you by my friends over at Organifi. Now, if you've been listening to the show, you know I always talk about their green superfood powder because I literally eat it every single day, and I'm not even exaggerating. The stuff is amazing. However, they just sent me a tub of this new product called Organifi Gold, and dude, it is so good. It's a ginger-flavored tea, sort of like a golden milk latte type situation. It's got turmeric, reishi mushroom, lemon balm extract, turkey tail mushrooms. Of course, it's totally organic. What's cool about it is you can make sort of a bulletproof drink, like a hot elixir with coconut oil, grass-fed butter, or ghee. Or you can just make a smoothie with ice and, you know, some kind of nut milk or something like that. So you can do it hot or cold. It's got no caffeine, no sugar, and it really relaxes you. So I really like it at night. It's like a nice warm drink. You make a nice fatty little drink out of it. It's gently detoxifying and just really chills you out. So I'm super into it. So it's called Organifi Gold. You can get it at Organifi.com. That's spelled with an I. And as always, your old pal Luke's got a hookup for you. If you use the code LIFESTYLIST, you will save 20% on your order. So I'm still in the green powder, but I'm adding this to the nightly regimen now because the green powder's got a little bit of matcha in it, so I don't like to do that at night. I do that in the morning, and I do the gold at night now, and I'm about half a tub in, and I'm already freaking out because I'm running out. So check it out at Organifi.com. Use the code LIFESTYLIST and save yourself a cool 20%. Today's show is brought to you by my friends over at Four Sigmatic. Now, you guys know for a while now, I've been into their medicinal mushroom blends, the little packets that you make these amazing elixirs with. However, they've got some new stuff they're rolling out that I'm really into, namely their coffee. They've got mushroom-infused coffee in both decaf and regular. Now, I'm really into decaf, especially the Swiss water extract because it's non-toxic. Sometimes I get too hyped. And I got to keep it calm. So I like to mix in some decaf coffee sometimes. I'm not trying to hammer my adrenals. So go to foursigmatic.com. Check out their coffee blends. They've also got amazing uh, mushroom matcha with lion's mane. So there's a number of different drinks. And what I really like about their superfood and herbal blends is that they're really easy to use. They come in little packets. You add hot water and you're good to go. Very portable, very convenient. We call this compliance in the health industry, meaning that they're really easy to use. They're not a pain in the ass like a lot of other healthy products, and they taste delicious. So they're organic, super powerful, super easy to use. That's what I look for when I'm representing a product. So go to foursigmatic.com. But wait, it gets even better. If you enter the code Luke Story over at Four Sigmatic, you will save 15% off your order. So go to foursigmatic.com, enter the code Luke Story, and save 15%. All right, all right, we're back again. Me, you, and this damn microphone. It's Luke Story from lukestory.com bringing you another episode of the Lifestylist Podcast. And listen, I know I always say this, well, not always, but for many episodes, I say this like, this is my favorite episode ever. But I'm going to say it again. This is one of the most meaningful episodes that I have ever delivered. I'm really excited to release this one. It was a profound experience for me. I think it's going to be the same for you. But before we get into that, I want to thank you for helping me get to a million downloads. What? We did it two weeks early. My goal was by New Year's Eve 2017. And bada bing, bada boom, we hit it two weeks in advance of that date. So thank you for sharing the show. Thank you for listening to this show. Thank you for going into the new podcast app on your iPhone and leaving a rating and a review. It's so easy to do that now, and it helps the show so much. Also excited to announce my new Lifestylist Podcast Facebook group. 
Go over there, hang out with us, ask questions. I'm going to answer them. You can also answer questions, provide value there. It's a great community for us. Just search The Lifestylist Podcast on Facebook. Hop in there. Let's party. Also want to let you know about our bonus show this Friday, the month of December. It's holiday month, yo. So we're putting out two episodes. Friday is with Tyler LeBaron, and we talk all about my number one supplement. I've been on this for about a year. I'm not going to blow the surprise, but it's really powerful. I take this every day, and it's probably changed the game for me more than anything. And we do a whole episode about it. It's powerful stuff, and it's just an element from nature. It's not new, but it's new on the health scene. Okay, so on to today's episode. Today's episode features Allison Charles, a.k.a. the rock star shaman, and she is quite a rock star. We recorded this one in New York City. I met Allison at an event that we both spoke at called Whitma Live. It was amazing. I saw her speak, and I was like, bing, that girl's on fire. Isn't that a song? Yeah, I think it is. <laughs> the girl's on fire. I wish I could play songs on my show, but there's copyright stuff. I would play that. What is Alicia Keys, right? Yeah. I was like, ding, she's special. Got to talk to her. Managed to do it. And it was one of the most meaningful shows I've ever recorded. In fact, so much so that at some point around, I don't know, the 45 minute to an hour mark, I actually cried. <laughs> and I was I was uh, sending her a message on Instagram just now. I was like, yo, I'm taking out the part where I cry. I can't do it. She's like, no, leave it. Vulnerability is where it's at. So I'm going to leave it in there. But I had a moment. I had an awakening. And I think that's the power that Allison has, man. She just has this really amazing, awake, feminine energy. And it was just so nourishing and so great to sit down and have a conversation with her. So who is Allison Charles? For those of you that don't follow her work already, she's a renowned television host, speaker, and a healer. She went from being a national champion athlete to a number one rated radio host and a national daytime television talk show host. Then all of a sudden she had this, well, not all of a sudden, but over the course of, you know, period, she became the rock star shaman. And so she's going to talk about how that happened. So Allison's amazing. She's just doing some really cool stuff. She's been recognized by Oprah Magazine, Forbes Magazine, Marie Claire, Well and Good. She recently made history by becoming the first person to ever perform on stage in the 25-year history of the HBO Film Festival in New York City's Bryant Park, where she guided a meditation for thousands. She works with global brands like the New York Times, Four Seasons, HBO, National Geographic, Chanel, Art Basel, Saks, and on and on and on. She is absolutely incredible. So what we cover in this episode is as follows. Her profound spiritual awakening, how things have not been the same since. Definitely a dark night of the soul story there. It's a really good one. And by the way, make sure you listen to the end of this episode. I mean, I don't know how you could stop. It's it's a tearjerker. <laughs> it's, a, it's a good one. But like we get into some crazy stuff here. Okay, so back to it. Uh, using negative experiences as a tool for growth, something I know a lot about. And do crystals have real powers or is that a fantasy? The dangers of fake ass healers and how to avoid them. The power of surrender in your life using leech therapy to rid yourself of demons. Yes, we really go there. How do you use CBD and THC safely if you're a recovering addict? Why Allison doesn't kill cockroaches? What a shaman is and why you need one? The benefits of cupping and acupuncture. The shamanistic practice of Sananga eye drops and how it clears your blocked energy. You got to watch that on YouTube. Shit is nuts. The power of hape tobacco snuff and why you should try it. Oil of gold and its powerful benefits. The idea that spiritual enlightenment is a journey, not a goal. The power of self-love affirmations and the fact that they actually do work. How haters and trolls actually help us grow and gain power and maturity. And finally, why it's so important to be vulnerable and authentic when it comes to spiritual growth and personal development. And how creating this podcast has been one of the most powerful tools for my own growth, as I said. So I bring to you one of the most fascinating and outstanding women that I've ever had the opportunity to interview, and that is Miss Allison Charles, the rock star shaman.
Welcome to the Lifestylist Podcast, Allison. Thank you. I'm really excited to be sitting here with you today on these poofs, and I'm super excited to learn more actually about your story. Oh, interesting. Yeah, it's funny because I just interviewed uh, Elena Brower, and at the end, she was like, wait a minute, who the hell are you? <laughs> yeah. I want to interview you. I was like, hey, sure. Yeah. I'm not mad at that, but this is absolutely about you. So people, um, welcome people watching on Facebook Live and Instagram Live. Here we are with the lovely Allison Charles. Those of you listening at home, I wish you could see what we just experienced. So we show up to this space where Allison's working. I'm going to find out more about that in a minute. And there's like this beautiful space downstairs, the open air, and it's just super vibey. And she's like, oh, let's record down here. But unfortunately for a podcast, there was a lot of foot traffic and some street noise. And you guys listening on headphones to this podcast would have been bummed. So we tried a couple different rooms in this space. And right now we're sitting essentially like in a closet in the bowels of an office building on the third floor or something. And uh, it's, it's very like low profile. There's not a lot in here except us and some white walls. No, it's great though because yeah, it's a 35,000 square foot building, four stories, roof, basement, and uh, this particular corner has yet to be activated. <laughs> so right, here right. we are. Well, we're it's lucky it. for us because all I ever care about is like a quiet spot and we have that. So I'm very happy. Yeah. Uh, so I want to start off just like find out what this space is all about. Mm. It's very, you're like, oh, we'll just meet at the space. I was like, space, what is it? And then I walk in, it's like this first floor is like fantastic, very shaman vibes going on, very like yeah. hippie chic moments down there. What, <laughs> what is this uh, Hashtag, environment we're in? Chic. Yeah. yeah, so it's called Doing Living Marketplace. And huh, I'll whittle this down. So we, Doing Living as a whole, it existed as a brand before we landed in this giant space. So this used to be Lee's Art Supply Store, and it was a staple in the neighborhood. We're on what's known as Billionaire's Row in Manhattan, 57th Street, right next to Carnegie Hall. And Lee's was here. And they vacated about a year ago. This building stood empty. And it's a whole long, wild, cosmic, universal story how we landed in here, but I had been partnering with a friend and colleague, Juliet Sylvie Yee. She was a very well-known celebrity makeup artist for many years, and as she was awakening more and more, she started to transition into these pop-up events, pop-up art, pop-up apothecary, universe brought she and I together, so we started, she would bring her doing living table with, she's huge on education, so it'd have the crystals and the Mayocopal and the Palo Santo and cards that explain the healing benefits you know, that's her jam. And it worked perfectly with me. I need to be in my just full power, you know, doing the shaman stuff. And I loved having the doing living component. So we would do these monthly events at these wonderful hotels and we did a retreat in the Hamptons. And then this building came into play. Uh, Someone had recommended her and uh, we came in as a pop-up experience here. We only have it until October 15th, but who knows? Who knows what universe has in store? The, what's coming in, I, what I understand is entering in is actually we're going from being this conscious marketplace, this conscious commerce that you saw down on the first floor, a lot of amazing uh, makers that craft their goods like in Brooklyn, and then it's event space. It, you know, it's massive, but what's entering in after us is like this wax museum. Really? So it's a little fascinating. I think there's that show Down Downtown Abbey or whatever. Yeah, yeah. I've yeah. never watched it, and I called it Downtown Abbey, and my mom was like, "I think it's Downton." I thought it was Downtown <laughs> Abbey too. Know. That's funny. But, I've definitely never seen it, but but I think like probably see the billboards or something. That's why. It's yeah, still but yeah. um. So, anyways, yeah, we have been in here all summer activating the doing living concept and the doing living brand that existed before, but having it activated in this gigantic space that we turn into a true marketplace all summer long. And it's been wildly successful. A lot of amazing partnerships and practitioners and events and speaker series and book launches and networking events and um, art exhibits. It, uh, it's been a wildly intense yet wildly powerful and beautiful few months doing this. We just dove in and whoa. And what's your role been? Are you like one of the curators that kind of helps pull different people together or what? Yeah, it's it's multifaceted. I'm on the founding team, we say. You know, Juliet's the 
ultimate main founder of Doing Living, uh, you know, but as I've been with her since uh, Doing Living was born, since we met and the way our work synergizes so well, when this came into play, it was never anything where we sat down and were like, okay, you're going to be a part of it and it's going to look like this. It just was one of those 110% organic processes where I just kept letting it show me the way and I ended up having a really integral role where I was really helping to curate who would come in, what kind of practitioners would come in and have their offerings. We had to hold sacred space, obviously. I mean, yes, I'm a shamanic practitioner, but as this is a conscious marketplace that's built on a certain ethos, obviously, whatever brands and, and people that have their functions in here, you know, it, it had to have a certain essence and, and consciousness vibe to it. So there was that. And then uh, me doing my jam up in here, you know, I got to uh, get back on camera before my awakening. I was a TV and radio host. So being on camera is where I feel honestly most at home. So, hey, <laughs> and uh, I relate to that. That's how a microphone is for me. Yeah. yeah. It's, I mean, I think that's by divine design, right? So yeah. we come down here and do the work we need to do. And so, yeah, last week I launched Doing Living Live and we had a whole camera set up, uh, really top notch live stream production going on by Connect. I don't know if you're friends with Kent. He's out. I don't know. Oh, I'd Seems like, like to be though. I feel, I feel like you guys should <laughs> yeah. be friends. I figured you already were. But uh, yeah, so I Machaful was our, our sponsor and I led a brief guided meditation to align with the Equinox energies. We did it on the Equinox. And then I had had an actress and like super smart business woman come in and I interviewed her. So that that's been happening in the building too. It's just, it's been cool. incredible. That's great. That's the long answer. That's great. No, it's all good. I, lo I love what's going on in the city right now. I'm having a hard time only being here for 10 days. Mm -hmm. uh, by the time I finish this week, I will have done 14 podcast episodes. <laughs> Normally I do one a week. It wow. took me 14 weeks. But what's been cool is as a result, I've met so many fantastic people like you and I'm just finding these spaces and these little subcultures and scenes. It's just like, oh my God, I don't want to leave. I'm really finding some cool stuff out here. Yeah, it's expanding exponentially, yeah. like nonstop. It's as you and I both know, this kind of work, these kinds of practices, these kinds of sacred spaces, I think are only going to infinitely expand and, and grow on the planet. But New York is just starting to soak it in more and more. You know, LA, I think is definitely ahead of the curve in terms of like that culture just being more of the norm and more accepted. And I notice when I do my events out there, uh, there's a lot more men that come to my events where here um, it's really well received and my career has gotten a lot of stability and strength here, but I, it's still more women than men and it's still, you know, it's just, it's a little bit different. I definitely notice a difference when I do my work here versus LA, but... Uh, That's funny that you mentioned that because I'm thinking about the number of interviews that I've had out here and I think the vast majority of them are females you know yeah. it does seem like this scene is, is definitely led by the feminine energy more out here yes the dudes are like you know I don't know. They're all in Brooklyn, like looking like uh, like uh, loggers or something. <laughs> they're yeah. all like baristas or something. No, I don't know. I'm totally making a yeah. retarded generalization. But yeah, in LA, I mean, I'm 46. Like every dude I know is like into the stuff I'm in. And there's droves of us that are into health and wellness and yoga and spirituality and stuff. But they're like dudes, you know, they're not like, right. they're not running around in white robes. Like, oh, hey, like they're pretty grounded entrepreneurs like dudes are doing stuff but they definitely a lot of them are really into this so it's cool yeah no it's nice and refreshing yeah i noticed like when i was ringing the hanuman bell and doing like all this stuff like you, you didn't bat an eye like it, i can tell this is just like oh i love it no you could like yeah douse me in essential oils like hit me in the head with a crystal i'm fucking all in yeah so let's uh so thanks for sharing what's going on with your space here and congratulations thank you and i guess i should note that even though we're only in this space until october 15th like you know, my partnership with doing living and the mission and the brand like still continues on and, and we're looking at other spaces and we'll just see where universe continues to guide yeah. us. And we're doing a partnered retreat in January, um, actually out at Rancho Valencia. Uh, I'm excited. I've never been there. So, so yeah, like it all continues to live on. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. So let's take it back a little bit to before this wonderful space was happening. Mm. You mentioned something during that last... I'm in the time machine. <laughs> during that, yeah. Let's take it back, way back. Mm. Uh, you mentioned something you referenced when I had my awakening. Mm -hmm. Tell us about that. Okay, we're going in, entering the portal of awakening in three, 
two, one. So yeah, I had been in this really long relationship. How long is long? 16 plus years. Damn. Uh huh. That is long. Yeah. I met him the day I was a very elite athlete growing up and I ran cross country and track for the university of Alabama. And I met him the day that I was lacing up my running shoes for the, for the first day of practice ever. And, um, so I was young when we met. There was a little chunk of time in the midst of that 16 and a half years where we weren't together. I moved to Florida. He moved back to where he was from in Connecticut. We were still in connection and still in touch. Uh, but yeah, it was a 16 and a half year journey altogether. And uh, he ended up being the instrument for my awakening is kind of the easiest way I can put it. And it's fascinating, you know, after the veil lifts and I... I I, I know even without asking you, I know you've had these moments um, where everything changes and your third eye opens up, the veil lifts and you become awakened. And I can look back and see, I was always into this stuff. The only books I ever read, even as a young person, were like Feng Shui, The Healing Power of Colors, Palmistry, Numerology. Really? Yes. Were you from Alabama? No, I was from oh. in, well, from Indiana. Oh, okay. I mean, Midwest to the dirty, dirty, you know, right. like not... I I mean, different, but you know, not not like India and not like yeah. Santa Cruz and <laughs> or whatever. Right. Um, so yeah, I was always studying that stuff. And my dad, he was my coach. So for distance running purposes, he started taking me to acupuncture and hypnotherapy at a very young age. So even though I was from this tiny town with one stoplight in Indiana, I was still being immersed in these kinds of practices. And I can look back and understand it was like even though I was not awakened yet to my purpose here, there was some subconscious aspect of me energetically that was like preparing, prepping, taking in the knowledge and like getting these different layers of me ready for that moment. And then he and I, yeah, went on this long journey together. And it's one of those where the suffering only continued to grow and it got to a place where, you know, we were engaged and supposed to be married and the engagement needed to get called off. The relationship needed to end. The pain was just, it was getting so horrible and I was having anxiety attacks and eczema and, and he was having his own battles and issues. And so we were like, okay, this has to end. And then a few months later, when try number two, 20 at that point came into play. He was like, you know, I've had some realizations. I didn't jump back into it. I was very leery. Uh, but when we were about to make another public appearance together as a couple, that was when this moment happened because divine intervention had to come in. It was like, I have this vision of them calling in all my helpers, the archangels, the animal totems, like leprechauns, you name it, like gathering all the forces. And they're like, hey, everybody get in. This is the moment we've got to stop her. This cannot continue. And uh, I became clear audient. I, I, we were about to leave and I was going to tell him a few more minutes and with makeup and I'd be ready. And as I was walking through my bedroom to finish up, I became clear audience and this voice spoke to me so clearly and said, stop and turn around. And I saw his phone on my bookshelf and this force like pulled me over to the book or to the phone there. And uh, I didn't know his code, finger, like automatic spirit writing, phone pinged open. And the voice, same voice said, brace yourself, what you're about to see is going to rock your world. And it was just finally, it, it, it was by soul contract and karmic and divine design. This was the moment designed to obliterate my ego and to shatter the untruths. And my soul was finally ready to see. And I just saw, you know, because this was the moment designed to awaken me and shatter me and turn my world upside down, that the evidence and things that I found in the phone d did all that. And, um, yeah, so I, I just, you know, I had angelic assistance the whole time. I remained calm and just said he had to leave. And I flew to Indiana and the clairvoyance started to come into play and the universe started showing me my whole life over the next three days like a movie and replaying it all with light and truth and none of the denial and none of the illusion was there with the movie clips. And I, I saw myself in truth, him in truth, the relationship, planet Earth. For three days, I was just literally 
gobsmacked. And uh, that began all of this, but it only started with me wanting to heal myself because I was seeing myself in truth. And I saw the codependency and the denial and all these issues that I wasn't letting myself see previously. And I was like, ooh, girlfriend, you. And I, by this point, I, was, uh, I had been a Division One college coach, a national champion athlete. I was on television as a wellness expert. And to wake up and to realize these identities and like who you thought yourself to be was not the case. I was like, holy yowzas. So I just started seeing healers. And it was a year and some change on that path where my truth, the shaman, the mission, all that stuff was like ping, 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 ping. And now I carry bells and burn, burn sacred Hollywood. <laughs> I've, I've, <laughs> noticed, I've noticed that. Yeah. Seems like wherever you go, at least on social media, there's like a lot of, things. a lot of props and things going on. Yes. There's going to be great smells and sounds happening yeah. wherever you are. Yeah. So that's interesting. So you had kind of one of those sudden revelations that then unfolded over a period of time afterward, but you yes. got like that initial boost was like snap, Dung. snap. Like, yeah. One moment veil lifted like, whoa. Yeah. And I I like how you, I pick up subtleties in people's, you know, uh, choice of words. And obviously you've done some work around that whole situation because you contextualize that relationship and the person and everything that you went through, which um, sounds like wasn't that awesome (laughs) from from one point of view, but that like it was your teacher, he was your teacher, and that you've learned how to contextualize at least over time those situations as something that was necessary for you to be taken to the next level. It was everything. Another healer, you know, joked but not joked when she said you know he he gave birth i don't give him all the credit by any means but she's like he and that thing birthed a rock star shaman you know like i say the moment that dropped me to my knees is the same moment that lifted the veil it's that that thing break down to break through it the test becomes your testimony all those cliched statements but they're so true and they're so powerful like that moment, even though, you know, on that scale of of the spectrum of earthly emotions that I believe, you know, we're all so excited about and when we want to incarnate, we're like, I want to go back to earth school. I want to feel betrayal. I want to know what it feels like. I've never done all the <laughs> lifetimes. I've never experienced this. And yeah. we're so excited to feel it all. And then we get down here and like, we're like, why does it have to be, you know, the more you understand this end and the more you accept yourself in shadow, then the more you can feel into the, the bliss and the enlightenment and the, you know what I mean? It kind of takes being able to work on both ends of that spectrum. Yeah. You know? Yeah, the darker the shadow, the brighter the light. <sighs> yeah. and, I, and I still... You know, I, it's interesting because I've, you know, I, I've on this trip in particular been interviewing, I think, a couple of people in, on the health side, but more in the spiritual community. Mm. And I've interviewed a couple people and I asked them, like, did you have a dark night of the soul? Like, did you have some, you know, like environment or situation in which you were forced to kind of like you know take a look at your ego and the shadow and all of that Mm -hmm. and and it's funny because a few of them have been like not really i just was like pretty happy already (laughs) and i just thought this looks interesting you know i'm like i totally don't relate to that because i think personally i never would have well who knows never i mean you, you don't know that but definitely the impetus for me to start exploring these realms uh, the realms of something you know metaphysical i guess you could say something other than just my material body and ego and mm-hmm. instincts and wants and like living on that animal level that and i that lived for surface, so long yeah yeah it's like i had to get my ass kicked so fucking hard yeah, I hear you. to get just a modicum of humility and open-mindedness to become teachable where right. i would actually listen to someone else because i was so I just had so many preconceived ideas when I was young and I was so defiant, so rebellious. There was what no was way. What was one of those preconceived notions? Like about what? That, that what? Well, that I knew what was best for me. Mm. <laughs> that I was like in charge of my life and I'm going to do what I want and do things my way. And, and even if you, know, you saw evidence maybe to the contrary, like do, did you let yourself see evidence to the contrary of that theory? Well, um, yeah, I think I think I did. Did I mean for me it was like really heavy addiction? That was kind of my path of awakening, okay. more so than relationships. And um, there was a period where I would have defiantly like denied that there was a problem, and mm. I was just having fun doing my thing. And this is what's cool. And how long was that, that? That the denial period? Just curious. Oh, I don't know. I mean, I started super young. I was mm. like in grade school when I started really? using. Yeah. Wow. And then blessed. I got sober when I was. 
14 for two years. Wow. And then went from 16 to 26, like just hardcore, you know? Wow. So I think from 16 to 26, there's probably a few years in there where I was like, I kind of got this, but mm. I always knew on, on some level that. Yeah. If you I let yourself off, go down deep. That enough. I was off the path, you know, mm-hmm. but um, just in terms of listening to someone else and like, actually, you know what it is, is like trusting someone else as a guide that yes. I really, really had to exhaust all of my own resources yes. and even just to explore the idea that there is some sort of power or entity or God or intelligence that's available. I mean, I kind of, you know, it's like, I believe that was possible, but it wasn't something that I really had to spend time and energy seeking yes. until I had no other choice. Yeah. Those know? pattern that, that the re total internal recalibration and reconfiguration when, you know, whatever it is, whether it's childhood wounding or addiction issues or past life karma, whatever it is, like when you start to let those layers of awareness open up that like, huh, there's something off here. And you start to let yourself sniff into and peek into there must be a different way, a better way, whatever. It really... To be able with that awareness then to actually make that shift into trusting a new way of living, it's like, it's a biggie, you know? And I think that, um, yeah, I I mean, that's kind of everything, right? Is to be able to make those shifts. I call it the shift and lift. But when you are so ingrained, whether it's energetically, ancestral, lineage-wise, karmic-wise, whatever, past life, when when those certain patternings and ways of thinking, believing are in there, you really, that's why I commend people that are on the awakening path, on the hero's journey. I mean, I commend any humanoid on earth because it's not an easy ride, but like those that really let themselves see and like learn and evolve and make those shifts, it takes a lot of courage, you know, and a lot of trust. It's like blind faith and trust all the time, total surrender all the time. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, that's really the ultimate goal is just <laughs> inviting more surrender energy into your life, is it not? I mean, that's Everything. me today. I'm running around New York City with all my gear and, you know, the cab won't come. I mean, it's just little things, but I think from practicing that surrender, then yes. what's happened for me is I've I've been given the gift of being able to surrender to some of the big things. And, mm-hmm. You know, like how you recontextualize that relationship is like, wow, this was a great experience, even though at the time it might have been emotionally painful. Mm-hmm. But that's like, that's the golden key is to be able to sort of reframe experiences in our lives and see, you know, zoom out and see the big picture. Yes. Rather than like 20 years later looking back going, ah, 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 now I see. It's like you can actually do that in the moment, right? Yeah, and it took me, of course, it took me a little while. I went through the most intense experience extreme emotional pain I had ever known. Uh, you know, so it wasn't like it happened overnight where I was like, oh, he was just the instrument for my life. <laughs> yeah, yeah, went through yeah. a lot of rage and like yeah. anger. And, you know, I have a lot of psychotherapists in my family, thankfully. And they were like, you know, we're getting the ring a ding ding for me on a pretty frequent basis and seeing other shamans and leech therapists and all these different healers. Cause universe, you know, I call it divine connect the dots. Um, but it kept showing me, you know, they really, really honors you back when universe universe witnesses you being willing to learn, being willing to shape, shift, and grow. And it will then, like the next step always appear, appears, right? They, they bring in the next divine connect the dot. And they just kept showing me for where the, the healing layer was at. Like, okay, now you have to go do this method with this practitioner. Okay, now for where your soul is recalibrated now, now I need you to go see this shaman in Minnesota, but it'll be a phone session and she's going, you know, it's like, uh, yeah, that whole, I don't even know why I started talking about that, but yeah. Well, because it's all awesome stuff. <laughs> So I want to go back to surrender, so, maybe. So when yeah, so when you have these these initial three days where you're having these revelations mm-hmm. and stuff, and then you said for like the, I mean, obviously it's not just the next year because you're still on the path. Yeah. But you mentioned the next thing was you started to locate or universe started to bring in some healers into yes. your life. What were some profound experiences you had with healers, mm. and did you encounter any that turned out to be like? fake ass healers because <laughs> I, th- I don't you know in a lot of the spiritual stuff i mean i'm very open but in the spiritual world there's like a lot of you yeah. know dubious like oh i'm a healer i'm a shaman i'm a this i'm a that and it's like i 
you know, have been lucky enough not to get misled too many times, but there's been a few times I thought like this thing was the real deal. And then when I sort of saw behind the curtain, I was like, oh yeah, no, No, I feel you. I know, I know. And it's like, and I understand because of, of people having experiences like that, you know, I can even feel people that hear about me and maybe haven't met me or like haven't experienced my work yet. Or even as they enter in for the first time, yeah, I can feel that like side eye, like, you know, let's see what we got going on here kind of thing, which I get, um, you know, because there's a lot of what's known as like spiritually bypassed people out there that like might have an awakening or maybe extremely talented with like connecting to whatever source and they know how to like channel an archangel, but they don't ever go down themselves to like, explore them their own selves and do the work and like do again that balance thing of like that spectrum all the balance within us is like you gotta you gotta keep diving down and like digging down and doing the work so you know and i think that's key any healer that um is an embodiment of their full power and their true purpose like you gotta you gotta do the work yourself so I hear you on that. I like how so, did you find your heal- healers and truly it I'm trying to yeah, you these think are, you kind of won the lottery and got a couple legit ones. Well, in the I, beginning? I think I was really blessed. I mean, I, I had those surrender moments and I was just like honestly, truly, like God, universe, source, sh- show me the way. I, I cannot do this alone. I I give up. Like I it was truly like a hands up, I can't freaking do this anymore. And they honored that. And so thankfully, you know, my one uncle who's a psychotherapist is a spiritually based one in Santa Fe, you know, married to a shaman. So that I hit the freaking gold mine, you know, and he was really able to um, guide me extremely well. And then it, it truly was because of me surrendering. It's like once you communicate to source, whatever you want to call it and say like, please show me the way. I need your help. I am willing. I am with you. I am on the path with you, but I, 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 I need your guidance. And I'm, I'm, I am, I am commanding your guidance and being very clear. It will come in. And so it was just like, truly, I can't remember this other shaman. She's an MD turned shaman, Sarah Bamford Seidelman. She's incredibly talented. And she's based on like Minnesota, this Caucasian woman with like a number of like adopted kids and her own kids and used to be a medical doctor who totally turned her practice over to shamanism. And somehow universe connected me with her. I can't for the life of me remember how. And she was like instrumental in my path and journey. And then I had a session with my aunt who's a shaman. And that's where I, for the first time I connected with my core animal totem, the black panther. So that was a game changer. And then going to see this Austrian man who's like this world famous leech therapist. Like, I don't know. I never thought I'd go get leech therapy, but I went twice and like, now they're my friends. Okay. We got to back up. So (laughs) (laughs) I'm like, I can't like take notes this fast. Ding, ding, ding. I'm like, okay, point, 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 point. So first off, what the hell is leech therapy? Well, I don't know that I'm the best like spokesperson to explain it. What was your subjective experience? I, I, I just, I, I began to trust, I had was having success with universe showing me like, you need to now go to this healer. So when leech therapy entered in, I thought, okay, like I'm just going to, I'm going to explore this. So I went with him, he's in Greenpoint, uh, Brooklyn, and had a consultation with him telling him the things I was going through. And the first session, God bless these leeches, because they're medical grade leeches, they're sacrificial. So they can only be used once. And so uh, I could almost start crying about it. (laughs) I'm such a sensitive, like, oh, good Lord. Um, Let me ask you this. If you're chilling in your uh, apartment here and you see a giant cockroach, do do you kill it? I can't. No? I can't. Not even flush it down the toilet with like gently, like in a paper towel? No, I, I'm unable to. And like even spiders and I <laughs> do now just, cohabitate. Do you just let them chill well, or do you try to sweep it out the door? Thankfully, in the place I've been in the last like, couple of years, I've only ever seen one. And when I saw it, it was already done. Um, but yeah, my sensitivity level is, is kind of an So when you say leech therapy, yeah. you're talking so about actual leeches actual, being put on your yes. body. So the first session, uh, we did it over the liver. So I had like one, two, I still have like little scars, like to show. Uh, I think I have one, two, three, like four or five leeches all attached here. The first time, it's actually on video. Really? <laughs> it's on Can like, we find YouTube. that anywhere? Yeah, really? it is on YouTube. Oh, sick. We're going to put that in the show yeah. notes. <laughs> 
That's how, I, I, I was actually got to see that. Freaking out! I mean, because you hear these, you know, there's movies made, like scary movies made about leeches, right? Yeah, yeah. And you know, and they're goobly and gobbly, and like, and and so, and I had no idea what to expect, and so the first one they put on. I was freaking out, and you'll see it on the video. It, but it, they're such divine creatures, and they actually, um, to help you, they, they put in all of these, like, a hundred and some healing enzymes that they pump in, and they're really fascinating creatures. Inside, they've got these different chambers and tubes. Uh, one chamber, like, pumps in the healing enzymes, and then the next one is what extracts out your lymph. It's not actually blood that they take out. It's the lymph, and then that goes into the other chamber, and they also come equipped with their own natural painkiller because it was not a pain-free experience. Like you feel when that suction cup mouth and they have like hundreds of teeth when it latches in and when they go "Eh," in, you feel it. And then, you know, when you get two or three on at one time and it takes a couple minutes for that painkiller to start to kick in, I was like, in it. I was in a place where I was like having to be with it, work with it. And uh, so that was like for overall detoxification and just like energetic clearing, shifting. And then the second time was more just from all the years of running. I have been trying to avoid knee surgery. I had one on this left knee and I've been supposing, you know, supposed to get one on the right. And I tried leech therapy. Um, you can still see that I had four on there. You see the tiny little dots. Oh, yeah, yeah. And so we had four leeches like sucking from my <laughs> right knee the second time. How so big th- are they? They get huge. Because they fill up with fluid from your body? Fill up. And they <laughs> Dude, get so... so gnarly. They, they go to town on you until they're so full, they ro- they can't take in anymore, and they just literally like roll and schluff off your body. So what, like how many inches is one? I mean... <laughs> it's like okay so you know that like the balloons like the the ones that you turn into circus animals or yeah. whatever and w- when you start it's just like super like sucked yeah. in and deflated and, yeah. and so that's how the leeches are they're just like like skinny little worm things and then they get engorged i mean i don't know i can't i don't they get like they get like the like that wide they, wow. they get like really So she's fat. holding up something about the size of a 50 cent piece or a silver dollar yeah they get yeah. really big and then they just blow wow. And then they're done. And then wow. they have to be done. Yeah. Like done that's done. so weird because I, I've, I, th- I thought that I've done every weird like <laughs> health thing that known to man. I think I might have heard of that, but it's shocking to me that I haven't tried it. Yeah. The more I learned, I had such reverence for them. And like towards the end, you'll see in the video, I was just like thanking them. And it, the whole thing shifted for me. Talk about making those shifts. Like that is a video exhibiting making that shift from going from fear based and like nervousness and kind of terror at times to like honor and reverence and gr- gratitude, deep gratitude for their help. It was trippy. What have been some other strange experiences you've had with healers or shaman? Mm, oh gosh. Honestly, I'll hone in on like one or two, but like it's been pretty countless at this point, you know, because thankfully most of my friends are mystics and healers and shamans and clairvoyants. I honestly, right before I came here with you, I was with this woman. I'm going to, I'm so sorry, queen. I don't want to like butcher your name. Dr. Deganit Nur, N-U-U-R, but I literally just came from her and she's a clairvoyant and acupuncturist. So I just, I don't even know if they're showing up or the cupping. I got cupping done for oh, the yeah, first time. Oh yeah, you got them. Oh so, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was wild though, because she merges, she's a clairvoyant along with it. So in one session, I was able to be on the table, get the cupping done, get acupuncture needles turned in, get Tibetan bulls playing, and a clairvoyant reading all in one. I like stacking modalities like that, though. <laughs> yes. I'm into that, because if you're going to do one, I might as well do five at the time. Yeah, and so she was incredible, really mind-blowing. Was and that I, your first cupping thing? That was actually, yeah, I've gotten acupuncture a lot, but I'd never done cupping. So, And I, when I went in, I, I was just thinking it would be acupuncture, but after our little chat with what was going on in my life, we cleared it. Uh, she was like, I think we'll run the cups all along your spine. I was like, yes, it's like a new experience for me. So that was really cool. And then um, the shaman that I go to for my own personal healing, I've never done ayahuasca, actually. I know that trips some people out. They're like, how do you, I've even, yeah. I, not, you know, yeah, it doesn't surprise you, but it's, it's interesting. Like I've even had one person say like, how do you call yourself a shaman if you've never done ayahuasca? And I'm like, it's not like that. (laughs) But uh, so the first time I ever did uh, hape, rape, 
Uh, have you ever done oh. it? Oh, oh, whoa, that was a trip. It's like this sacred ash, like tobacco ash. I'm, uh, I'm gonna. Oh, gonna do you like uh, snort, snort it? it? Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. My my like crazy Kundalini um, Sikh chiropractor does that stuff. Oof. But I used to, I smoked for like 20 years, and okay. it took me forever to quit. And so once I yeah. quit, I'm like, yep, I'm not ever touching nicotine. Totally <laughs> like I'm so that. terrified. No, he that's... was like, dude, it's totally different. I'm like, you don't know my biology. Like yeah. I like literally touch something, and I'm instantly addicted. You yeah. know, I'm like so prone. Yeah, but so I've that, heard it's pretty awesome. It though. was, whoa, like it was hashtag like whoa. They like light your head up, just it, like just, no whole body, <laughs> really whole body. I went places, like I went to galaxies. Whoa, that, yes, whoa, and it was a whole. It's hard to articulate it, you know. Of course, you have to experience it, but that first time. Um, it yes, the entire my physical body, energy body, I, it was um, so cathartic and releasing, and and you have this. You're not supposed to like swallow it at all, and like or blow your nose for a good bit. So you have this like bowl in front of you where you just like <laughs> like cry <laughs> and slobber and snot into, and like all this like it's just, but it's powerful. Um, that I talk so clearly. I mean, I'm in constant connection and communication to Gaia, Pachamama, Mother Earth, and Consciousness Source, and Jesus happened as an ascended master happens to be my main love and light guide. So I'm I'm with them like 24 seven. But my because of where I was accessing on it, I was so the communication with Source was like so clear. It was like right here, and I was just getting all these directions and guidance, and I was just like, "All right, I see." And like right after it, kind of like um, releases the intensity of it after I don't know ten minutes, I was just like, "Whoa!" And so that that was really powerful. And then that same session, we also did uh, serenge, these drops that you put in your eyes. That feels like you're putting acid into your eyeballs. What? I can't believe I haven't done all this weird stuff. And. <laughs> And it's what they use in the jungle for night vision. It's plant medicine. Whoa. Yeah. And so that was trippy. So I had just gotten done with the rapé and then we put this like lemony, I mean, that's what it feels like and it passes, but those first, you know, and you have to really breathe with it and just like, you know, you're not supposed to like tense and like flinch. Your natural reaction is to want to do that. But the more you can just like soften into and like let yourself lean into and breathe with it as opposed to like, you know, freaking out, like that ends up being then your experience with it. And so you really uh, learn quickly to like do your best to soften into it when you, all you want to do is like, oh my God, there's acid in my eyes, you know? Do, bo- do, do both of those things or either of them like get you high? Is it a feeling like being high uh, or just not the- a feeling of being different? Different, especially the serenge is different. The rapé is like, I don't want to call it like a buzzy feeling, but the potency, when it gets into you and your energy grid and your energy body, the potency of it is so full. And it, so that feels buzzy, but that word doesn't do it justice. So that's more of a high-ish feeling than the serenge was. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. And then this other guy I, I you should meet when you get back to the West Coast is um he went to my last event that I did there in, at Unplug Meditation Center. He came up to me afterwards, and I, I also work with this oil of gold, which I'm happy to give you. Well, I don't know if you can take a drop because it's based in alcohol. I don't know if you... Oh, I can do that. You can do that? Okay. Yeah, I take tinctures um, and stuff. Okay, cool. So he, I've learned my threshold. Okay, right? yeah. I'm like, wait. Uh, for, I'm like a little more cavalier than some <laughs> okay. alcoholics would be, but if I've made it 20 years, I think I kind of know my... Yeah, I know my thing, but I've a lot of people won't though. Sure, even in the beginning, I when I'd get like herbal, you know, reishi extract or something, I would like boil it, and it, it just became like such a pain in the ass. Finally, I was like, all right, let me try one drop and see if I turn into a fucking werewolf. You right. know, and I was like, ah, two drops, three drops, and I mean, I even take um, CBD oil with mm. with THC, but I just yeah, know, I, I just know 
four milligrams won't get you high. Like yes. I'm six two. There's no way that I'm going to feel that. So right. I kind of know my boundaries there. But That's anyway, good. so I'll give you that. So yeah, I, I shared that it was um, woven into my meditation that I led there. And this man came up to me afterwards. I had a few bottles. If anyone if it really spoke to their soul, they could get it. And it, he was one of them. And he was this older gentleman. And he, he was like, I would like to purchase uh, oil of gold from you. And he gave me his card and it said energy medicine medicine on it, Dr. Michael Gallitzer. And I was like, whoa, energy medicine. And he used to be a really highly respected um, ER surgeon for 30 plus years. And he's now totally transitioned into energy medicine. Really? And he's on Wilshire. Wilshire. Dude, that's where I live. I live on uh, by LACMA. You got to hit him right up. Near Wilshire. Dr. Michael Gallitzer. He's incredible. I was in his office for like three and a half hours because he's got all these like things from this like German inventor and these contraptions and you put these goggles on that feels like you're walking into heaven and it's like this infinite light and he, we were doing all this muscle testing and he sent me home with like 10 bottles of serum and I was sounds just, like a biohacker I like yes. this guy <laughs> yeah infrared lights and yeah it, it that's was you're speaking my language so you What's and his him name? Dr. Michael Gallitzer G-A-L-I-T-Z-E-R he's the man so yeah, I mean, I'm just so blessed that like I'll constantly, because I'm a willing participant and I allow this magic to be shown to me because I can't communicate that, I am just brought the most incredible people to learn from and to immerse into new methods with. It's fun. If you're anything like me, you're a huge podcast fan. That's in fact why I started one. But there's one thing that I'm not a fan of, and that is trying to remember all of the resources and recommendations that either the host or the guest mentioned. Well, I've taken the pain away, my friends, and created a wonderfully clickable newsletter that I'm going to send you every week. To get on my email list, it's super easy. All you have to do is go to lukestory.com, click on Join the Evolution on the homepage, enter your name and email, and each and every week I'm going to send you every single link, resource, and recommendation that either me or my guests mention on the show. So no more trying to remember it, write it down, Google it later. All that has been taken care of for you. All you got to do is go to lukestory.com and sign up for my newsletter, and I'll send it all to you for free. Here's the bonus, though. A lot of the links that I'm going to send you have sweet, exclusive discounts associated with them, whether it be Bulletproof Coffee or some of the other brands I work with. I beat the hell out of these vendors and get discounts for you, and I'm going to send those to you as well. So sign up for the newsletter. You will not regret it. And now, back to the interview. So, I mean, I guess I do a lot of things just out of curiosity, but mm -hmm. f for me, if I was going to seek out like a healer or a shaman, it would be probably because I was having a really hard time with something and I was kind of going through some shit or I was really screwed up and felt like I needed a healing. Mm. The rest of the time, I just sort of do my basic meditation and, you know, the supplements and all this kind of stuff that I do. Uh -huh. But you seem like a really happy person. Like you're pretty lit up. You don't seem like fucking neurotic and depressed, <laughs> you know what I mean? Or like full of anxiety. You're very clear, uh -huh. but yet you still are like pushing forward and seeking these people out. Like you just before our interview went and saw a healer. So yeah. what's your motivation now if it's not <sighs> pain? Is That's it such a beautiful way of asking that question. That was so, wow, what a gift. Um, my motivation is truly just self-awareness. I'm truly committed. I, I understand to the deepest soul level that we are these infinite beings with infinite ways to learn and grow and evolve. And I know that it's never ending, right? The ways in which we can understand ourselves, learn about who we are and why we do certain things. Uh, it's infinite and the places within ourselves and within universe that we can access. And I'm just continuously and always committed to doing this work and to being on this path. Now, don't get me wrong. There are times where I want to tap the fuck out. And I recently had one where I'm just like, ex I can get ex exhausted of doing the work, you know, and like, I just want to have, you know, a couple of days where I'm not like identifying, you know, 
this behavior and how I can transmute and transcend. And it's just like, okay, like, and the work, because it takes like vulnerability and courage and all those other things, like, yeah, you know, there's times where I, I, I grow weary of it. And, um, and I want to press the pause button. And I've had a couple of moments where I want to press more than the pause button. <laughs> you know, I mean, like, really, but not really. Yeah, yeah, uh, for sure. So, you mean I, like the ultimate pause button, the stop I, button? <laughs> <laughs> there's the pause button, then there's the, uh, there's the stop, then there's the eject button. The eject button is like, I'm fucking done. Seriously? Really? Yes. I'm a good person and this? Yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah, but uh, yeah, it's truly, I just, I am, am curious and I, I just, it's who I am. It's what it is and it's where I go. It's just this continuous like learning. I don't, I, I don't know. Is that like a clear enough answer? Like the motivation for me is continuously doing these modalities and seeing these healers is, well, because I'm so self-aware, I can continuously see stuff about myself, right? Right, right. But yet I also want to continue growing in that self-awareness. So it's like it just keeps pinging off of each other. It's like I'm self-aware, so I see that uh, I hadn't been in total alignment with um, truly enjoying the process, right? So let me do some energetic shifting and healing work on that. So I go to a healer to work on that. And then when you're with that healer in that session, inevitably, when you sit with another person that's activated and awake, it pings into your light grid and you start to have these other awarenesses. So it's like it truly becomes this never-ending process. Yeah. Uh, that I actually need to, you know, like I talked about, have to take some breaks from every once in a while. Yeah, I, I relate to all of that deeply. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> yeah, I get it. Because at a certain point for me, there was a line that I crossed. I think when I started getting such great results of just doing my best to live by spiritual principles, mm -hmm. that it wasn't so much out of fear and desperation of like, you know, having to go back through those painful experiences, but it was just like, holy shit, you can actually be happy. I mean, mm -hmm. I was fucking shocked when I started to mm -hmm. become free and get unplugged from the matrix. I mean, I would just like kind of slap myself and go, wait, I, I don't even know what it's like to not have problems that you worry about, to right. not wake up with an, an anvil on my fucking chest every day where I'm just like, <gasps> who's trying to kill me? I yeah. mean, that's like literally how I spent the first half of my life, mm -hmm. you know, and then to start waking up going, okay, what problem should I be worried about? Mm -hmm. And I go, wait, <laughs> I don't have any problems. Or, you know, I do, but I just don't contextualize them as problems, right. you know? And so it was like, once I started getting uh, the rewards, man, and the benefits of this seeking, and I guess not just the seeking, but started to find, uh -huh. then that was the first level of like renewed or continued commitment. Then when I started to be able to pass it along to other people yeah. and participate in unplugging other people from the matrix, like yeah. that shit lit me up. <laughs> yeah. You know, I'd take some guy that's like, you know, used to feel like, feels like I used to feel. And I'd be like, well, here's the shit that I'm doing and that mm. I've done. And then they do it. And all of a sudden they love their career and they get married and they have a kid and they're yes. fucking happy. And they used to be like a total depressed loser. You yeah. know, it's like, it's a really fulfilling. So I, I too, I'm just like obsessed with the path of yeah. growth. You yes. know, it's just as curious what motivates you yeah. and because you do keep, you keep, it's like, I think once, once you accept that, because I've always thought, oh, I just want to be enlightened, you know, as if like I get there and I'm, Whoa. you know, I'm a Ram Das or someone. And then like, I don't have to worry about my problems anymore. Never it's like, ends. yeah, there's like, if that happens, then you leave the body and you go on another, yes. <laughs> another lesson, you know? Yeah. So when I finally accepted like, oh shit, there actually is no point at which I'm just fixed and I'm done and Correct. I'm cooked, you know? It's it, kind of like, it keeps it novel and interesting. Now. Oh, oh, always. And that's what I explain to people, uh, you know, I, it's like, I don't want to paint the hero's journey as like, uh, whatever bad, but I also need to let people know it's also not this fairy dusted sparkly land where you're problem free. I know people, you know, say to me a lot like, oh, you seem so like jovial and like, you know, whatever lit up. And I'm like, yeah, those things are true, but you know, I'm also in the trenches a lot and like that path where you let yourself like learn and grow means you let yourself see those aspects of yourself that are not freaking pretty and fun to look at 
and yeah. and and sometimes when you're with a fellow friend or healer that's like mirroring or expressing to you like something they're picking up on you too like i still get those human defenses of like i instantly like want to put the plugs in and be like I don't want to hear yeah, something yeah, about yeah, me yeah, that yeah. is not fun to look at. You know, yeah, like yeah. I la, still la la la. I can't hear you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah totally. But then after that, that like initial like flinch, then I'm like, okay, fucking tell me. You know, let's here we go again. Yeah. You know, so it's just like it's all of that. And and the other part is, you know, I I know that I'm here on this mission, and and we're here during this time of global planetary awakening, and. I am a catalyst for change for a lot of people. Like it seems you are too. And I surrender to being this instrument in this vessel. Like I, I realize that yes, I allow myself to get to this place, but what moves through me is from Pachatata, Pachamama. And like, I am also committed to being of service and to being fully in the mission that I incarnated to be on you know what I mean so it's like that plays a huge role in me seeing these healers continuously too it's like I want to be fully embodied in my truth my power my light my shine my freaking shine and brightness like if any of you have an issue with my light already sorry it's only going to get bigger and brighter like it is what it is and I, I feel actually really good that I can claim that and say that and speak that because that was one of the p pieces of suffering for me. My light has always been really bright. It's how I am. It's who I am. And like certain comments along the way in childhood, it would just chip at that effervescence and chip at that like that brightness. And uh, over time, you don't even realize it's chipping away at your soul and your truth and your shine. And when I started to realize that it had been eroded away and I put a shell around and it started playing smaller than what I'm designed to do, that was a role in my suffering and a role of the shaman sickness. So I am just like, I I'm just going to keep on letting that light shine. I absolutely implore you to do so. Thank and, uh, you. And isn't it in a way like so much less work to let it shine? I'm sort of having this awakening lately and I largely due to this podcast being a, a vehicle by which I'm able to put myself kind of in a public arena mm -hmm. and use this show as a means by which to explore myself and what I'm finding is it's so much less fucking work to just shine as you know to use your vernacular it's like yeah. to let that light out or for me it's almost like it's an opening of my heart yes that I've always Aww. been you know <laughs> Oh my God. Yes. Yes. Might be the first time I've ever cried on my own show, but it's like, I just always have hidden that. Mm. And that's like, that's my thing. You know, I'm just, I'm all heart guy. I'm not like an intellectual guy. And so mm. it's like, <clears throat> having the show has allowed me to just kind of have the same attitude. It's inspiring to hear that thing. So that's why it hit me. It's like, oh my God, I'm like fucking... I don't have the energy to hide anymore. Yes. I'm going to start crying. Oh, my gosh. And it's, it's crazy how, <laughs> <sighs> as I've made a decision, I mean, it, it really, it, this show really has been a vehicle that I'm, I'm, I didn't know that the purpose of that. I was like, hey, I'm into some cool stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm really obsessed with all this shit. <laughs> and other people seem to benefit from the things I discover. So, hey, I might as well like share what I'm discovering with the world. Like people like you that may not have ever heard of you are going to hear of you now, right? Mm -hmm. But I had no idea it was going to be such a cathartic thing for me because I've gotten feedback from social media and from listeners of the show that the thing that they really like about it is how real it is. Mm -hmm. And specifically with me as the host and kind of the narrator and curator of this little ship that I've uh, set sail to uh, is they love when I'm super real and authentic. Mm -hmm. And so I've been getting reflected back kind of in a public way that that letting my heart be open and like letting myself shine and just be real and my, let my true self out as much as I'm able to grasp that like, that's the thing people actually like the most. Mm -hmm. So it's so crazy to see that throughout my life, I mean, starting from, three years old or whatever that I've exerted so much energy to hide the very thing that <laughs> that will truly connect me to people mm -hmm. in a way that's supportive it's just like it's the ultimate 
mind fuck of the ego. <laughs> you know, the ego is like, is so dumb in a way. It's very cunning, but it's dumb. Because the games that it programs into you to protect you are actually the things that end up limiting you and harming you. The stories that it tells. Yeah, it's trippy. So I just, I really resonate with that. And I'm having so much fun just like being free. Yes. And I think ultimately that's what, that's why we do all the things that we do is to become more free. So liberation. So, so good on you. Mm. Um, one of the, it's so funny that I like got all emotional. I've done that a couple of times when I've been interviewed on other people's shows, but on my show, I usually keep my shit together. I'm pretty <laughs> well, focused. You, you still kept your shit together. That was like maybe the most you kept your shit together by crying. Do you know what I'm trying well, to sure, say? Sure. Like, yeah. Yeah. From that, that perspective. Yeah. So as you're starting to shovel coal, so to speak, and you're working on yourself mm -hmm. and you get through these challenges. Maybe you're uncovering a defective character or just a personality trait that's selfish or, mm -hmm. you know, some, um, some suffering or some pain, some trauma, some shame, like all the stuff mm -hmm. that we work through. I just, I refer to that as like the coal that you're like shoveling out of the way. Mm -hmm. I noticed that I've had a tendency because I am always working on myself to sort of negate all of the progress that's been made mm. because once you kind of get through that thing you're like all right what's the next thing and it seems like there's just a fucking mountain of coal in front of me all the time you know that's uh -huh. like okay now i'm you know i'm in a relationship and i'm experiencing like it happened to me last um last year i got in a relationship and i started experiencing jealousy mm. and i was like what I'm not one of those douchey guys that gets like jealous and <laughs> possessive. Yeah, yeah, I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah. I mean, honestly, I was shocked because I just had never experienced that mm -hmm. energy. Mm -hmm. I was like, God. So then like all I could see was that. So I need to like work on that. But oftentimes, I think some of us have a propensity to forget to give ourselves, not yes. give ourselves credit, but to acknowledge yes. the growth. You know, it's like that other side of humility where you acknowledge the the good parts as well as like having the self-honesty to Completely. look at what needs to get worked on so how do you find balance between you know all the progress that you've made and not getting sort of overwhelmed or discouraged when you come up against something that's glaringly dysfunctional or whatever yeah i mean it's no coincidence you bring it up i mean I, that's part of what i have been working through and around it was it was a facet of that awesome um, appointment that I had before I came here. I don't, again, because this could be a story, you know, that just gets repeated, but like, I have to watch, I think we all have to watch that, you know, with me being bred to um, be a competitor and to win and to be a champion and running my first race before I was three and like a one in numerology and a Capricorn that never stops, you know, the goat that never stops climbing the mountain and like, I have that drive and that natural ambition and high performance athlete and person in me, I really do have to check myself and be as mindful as possible with what you're exactly what you're bringing up. Because I do catch myself quite frequently just saying like, Allison, take a sacred pause and like, the energy of my commitment to this work can get going like this. The energy, the beautiful, I honor you and respect you, but the beautiful energy of New York City can be like, wah, 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 wah. and then you add in those examples of those, those aspects of me to all of these like wildly intense energy systems it can be this thing where it's just like, yeah, and it sounds like that and it feels like that. And I have to bring it back and find my center again and ground down. And yeah, just let myself feel and remember like all that is going on and all that has transpired. And I try to look at myself every morning in the mirror and at the very least, like look at my own soul in the mirror, you know, place my hand to heart and sacral chakra and just like speak some loving thoughts to myself and take a, a moment to honor, like say, thank you. I love you. I honor you. You're doing great. Like just breathe, enjoy. And it's like those little things that I need to do to bring me back to, to that present moment. Otherwise it can just be that nonstop thing of like that as opposed to like this and that you know i guess there's a, a balance or a fine line between like acknowledging what one still has to work on or work mm -hmm. with 
but not being discouraged when you find that inevitably there's always going to be something in your path like ahead of you that yeah, like and oh no this you know sort of I guess like or this again there's yeah, that thing where like you think that you like yeah and you're just like yeah. I thought I dealt with that two years ago it's yeah. another but it's like another layer of it do you think at, at a point you've learned how to kind of have fun with it even when you when you find something you're like oh god <laughs> this again or oh now this that I didn't know was to be dealt with to sort of in other words, like wear the wear the world like a light garment and not mm-hmm. not take the whole process too seriously. Yeah, I definitely am pretty good about that. I, I've had to work on that. You know, there was a, a deeper seriousness level to it a while ago, and I was aware again. You know, I was like, I was seeing that. I was like, ah, oh, you know, you gotta you gotta lighten up about this stuff. So I definitely laugh at the absurdity. I laugh at a lot. I, I still have my moments. I got a, I had a moment earlier today where I was like genuinely like frustrated and upset and uh talking very loudly out you know out loud to myself and just like you know I was I was angry um, were you on the streets of New York City or in your place I was in, in my home? place however <laughs> I am one of those people I am just constantly talking to myself or talking to wh- whatever and I catch myself a lot talking to myself on the streets out loud and I'm like oh my god I'm one of those people oh it's awesome you couldn't do that if you lived in Phoenix or some shit you know you're in New York you got that's one thing I love about New York is like you can literally do whatever the fuck you want so walking true. around the streets they didn't I'll nobody be, cares I'll be all befuddled like pissed off because I dropped my backpack and the cab didn't stop or whatever and it's like I re- I'm like oh I look like a freak and no one's even batting an eye you know yeah it's so it's true. fantastic yeah. so what are, what are you working on within yourself right now mm-hmm. what what have you found recently that that you want to try and overcome in terms of i don't even want to give it you know that negative connotation but what are you stuck with right now that you want to work on hmm. let me tap in and see one second ah it's the letting go truly it goes back to where we started actually in the hour of the repatterning, reconfiguration. Again, with my upbringing and the way I was bred uh, as an athlete, that kind of like no pain, no gain in order to like rise to the top or to achieve what you want. You know, it's got to feel or look a certain way. And I know that that, that, is, that is not the truth. And that's certainly not divine truth. And that's certainly not the truth of like the fifth dimension and these dimensions that we're entering into. That's like the outmoded, outdated 3D lie uh, matrix bullshit way. <laughs> and well so said. Well said. that's really, truly what that session was about a lot of it uh, before I came here. And this new space that I am now entering into as I sit here with you is trusting. It was kind of laughing when you're talking about with the coal and like the up, uh, going up the mountain or going uphill. Yeah, like the pile of coal yet in front of you to shovel. Yeah, it's like... (laughs) It seems to never shrink somehow. I'm trusting in this way of, I don't need to have, like I don't need to be going uphill anymore. And I'm now allowing myself to trust in the ease and trusting in the going downhill and the ride and the flow and, you know, the complete kind of opposite way in which I, I was bred. I'm just going to, it's it's not totally clear because I'm literally sitting in what I'm trying to explain right now. Like right. I just got the cup sucked off my back and like right. I'm still in this. Um, so I'll give you a more coherent answer when we talk uh, in a week or whatever. But it's it's something around that though of of um, truly aligning and connecting with the enjoyment of life, the enjoyment of the process, and trusting. Trusting in the ease, letting it be easier. Yeah. What about you? What are you working on? Right now, I am in the middle of, well, really focusing. There's a couple of different things. One is really surrendering to what I'm doing here with you, this work being my path. Mm. Coaching, public speaking, having the podcast. I've got five books in my head. Yeah. That kind of stuff of really just despite some of the doubt that I experience in myself sometimes of just like doing it no matter what and just going big and going hard with that. So that's one is sort of 
working through any traces of imposter syndrome mm. that I might experience yeah. at times. Imposter because syndrome. Because I was in the fashion industry for 17 years. I know. I find that fascinating. I had no idea until you yeah. mentioned that. So I felt good about myself there. I proved myself. I had a long, successful career. I started a business, mm -hmm. uh, which I still have, called School of Style, and it was mm -hmm. great and successful. So, you know, I feel good about what I've accomplished there. But when I started into this realm, I really had no credibility on mm -hmm. a public level. I'm just like someone who's been practicing health and wellness principles and spiritual principles for a really long time. Mm -hmm. But to me, I'm just like some dude, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't have anything on paper that mm. gives me any right to go around and talk about this you stuff. You don't have a shaman certificate on <laughs> yeah. your refrigerator? No, I don't. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> so it's been a, it was a, it took a lot more courage to kind of just start doing this, but I also didn't have any expectations and I didn't have any, I mean, I own another business that I mm. eat from, mm -hmm. so it wasn't like mm. it's do or die. It's more That's just like... Good letting go of my own pride and the fear of failure and what if people don't like it or mm -hmm. what if I can't get guests? I mean, just, I don't know. I just like one day was like, oh, I'm starting a podcast and just mm -hmm. did it, you know? How long ago was that? Uh, it was a year, June 6th. So it's been a little a year and a couple months. Nice. And it's been wildly successful, yeah. you know, despite <laughs> not knowing what I'm doing and just inventing it as I go. But there still is a degree of like, can I really be doing this? It's almost like I'm, yeah, I'm in a really dream. Trips and your head out. Yeah. yeah, I'm in a dream. I'm like, dude, I think you have like a career doing this because now I'm getting asked to speak. I'm going to Aspen. Honor. I just, I'm out here. You know, we spoke together at Whitma Live yeah. and I'm starting to get tapped to be on other podcasts. Great. And I go, wow, I guess I have something cool to say. All right. Great. Well, it goes up against like the brainwashing we had in this yeah. society and this culture of yeah. like what life is supposed to look like in your career. You're supposed to be like hired by someone else and working for someone else. And when you start to understand that like you create your own blueprint and you create your own life and that it can be and feel and look any way that you truly want it to. I mean, of course it doesn't like, it's not a genie kind of situation, but like, and then when that starts to happen, it can be a little like, sometimes you feel like you're floating somewhere in this other abyss or this other realm. And it's like, whoa, is this really real? Well, this is my life. And actually, not only is it my life, it's actually been my life for like the last couple of years. So I, maybe I can trust it a little bit more. You know, it's like, it starts yeah. to, hit up against all that that brain brainwashing stuff and imposter yeah. syndrome is fascinating a lot of yeah. highly successful people come up against imposter syndrome yeah. syndrome yeah i mean lucky for me the doors are opening you know with this new kind of career uh -huh. so if there is any imposter syndrome it's totally in my head mm -hmm. because no one else seems to reflect that back to me at all like everyone i approach is like yes 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 i don't get many no's about anything that i'm trying to do mm -hmm. and now i'm starting to make some money with it and it's become like a second business and all that so cool. so that i think is a deep seated thing but the primary thing and they're both kind of related because i now have the energy to really work on this as more of a business is the relationships with people of your gender. Mm. Oh, <laughs> you know? I see. Yeah. yeah I because feel I just, <laughs> I've yet, I don't know that you ever have the perfect relationship or, you know, right. how do you, how does one determine if one's healthy or not? Right. But uh, a few years ago, I sort of got to the place in my life, maybe a little later than some men, where I'm like, yeah, I don't really like this whole dating and just like banging girls, like mm. as a sport, is not so fun anymore. Yeah. Um, not that I did that really unethically, I don't think, but. It's just where I was. I just was having fun and being free. And right. I loved being single. And I, I made an art form out of how to stay single. And I didn't know, but very love avoidant, you know, mm. in psychological terms. And I just I was doing other things in life. And then I was in a relationship that I, I fell in love with the, the woman. And, you know, we were together for five years. And I was like, oh, actually, this is really nice. I didn't even know this existed or mm. was possible for me. And then as a result of that, even though it didn't work out, tried a couple more times to do that thing, you know, and like uh -huh. really open up and be vulnerable and like learn about intimacy and explore that. And, you know, I don't know that you're ever successful, but those couple didn't work out. Mm -hmm. And, um, and the last one was pretty painful on a lot of levels mm. during and after. And so it forced me to kind of take a look at that part of my life like yeah this is your lesson right now mm. so the lesson for me and how it relates to the business and everything else is like I need to just step back and really do some work on myself and evaluate how I operate in that space so I'm going to like 
intimacy workshops and Beautiful. doing all kinds of rad stuff. And I'm like, holy shit, this is next level. I mean, yeah. I'm really growing a lot. <laughs> That's and so, so great. Yeah, I'm so, so happy for you. Yeah, so I'm like three months into a six month uh, break from all of that dating or anything. And yeah. I've never done that before since. Congratulations. Since I was a virgin in 1985. <laughs> <laughs> you know? I was like, starting in 1986, I've pretty much been going strong, you know? Mm. So it's, it's really been cool to withdraw my energy from that yes. just 100%. And I'm just, I don't know. I'm almost, I thought it would be hard to do that. But I'm almost going, hmm, I don't think six months is even going to be long enough. Yeah. Like, I'm really enjoying just being with myself and not having any distractions and also just really seeing in a visceral way how that energy is being so channeled into productivity. I mean, I am a fucking machine. Yeah. Because I'm not spending energy on trying to pursue a relationship or manage right. one or have one or, you know, it's just like, yeah. hmm, I'm not like... I'm not avoiding it because I'm afraid of it. It's just like I have to really read some books and like get some therapy and get my shit together because now I'm very clear on what I want. Great. You know, in terms of a partner and the type of relationship I want, like I'm crystal, crystal clear. That's kind of everything. But I also know that I have to be able to hold the space in order to handle what I want. And so mm -hmm. I'm kind of in a process of building that strength and um, sort of preparing, you know, tilling the soil so to speak so that when the time comes i mean it's not the purpose of it but so if and when the time comes i'm yeah, like ready really for ready. what i'm ready to call in so it's been fascinating you know it's just like it's such a weird thing to do for me yeah but it's very natural and fun and actually pretty easy and i think the universe is sort of making it easy for me it's mm, just like i don't know time. there's no like temptation to come out of it i haven't like oh met someone like oh my god i'm in love or right or whatever and i don't really want to just date casually anyway you know i feel you so um so that's my path right now i'm kind of in the middle of it and it's cool it's but again one of those things where pain and suffering had to motivate me to go okay all mm. right i need to stop and like take a look at this shit like i cannot i have some patterns that i just mm. am not interested in repeating you know yeah a lot of it I actually i went to this thing called the hoffman process I've out in california of, i definitely heard of this it's hardcore yeah it's like a week-long program it's yeah. in napa napa valley and um it's not about relationships or anything at all it's just about I totally have heard of this. I've had friends that have gone it's through it. It's about deprogramming stuff that you picked up in childhood. Yeah. When I first heard about it, I was like, I've already done therapy about mommy and daddy and like all that shit. And I was like, do I really need to do that? But there was just a pull. Mm -hmm. And so I went there and it was, it was very profound in that the experience was cool because it's sort of like group therapy, psychotherapy, expressive therapy, but there's a spiritual and sort of a hypnosis mm. vibe in there too. Mm. And I've only done those different energies separately. And this was sort of all inclusive. So it was very interesting. Um, and you stay at like a certain house, right? Yeah. Yeah. They have a facility. Yeah, it's exactly. called the Hoffman Institute. Yeah. 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 It's beautiful. It's out in the woods. They have a little hot spring pool. I mean, it's divine. Right. Um, but what was trippy is when I got out, it was just, I just came back to LA and went back to life. And when I went in there, I was going through a couple like serious problems. One being the demise of a relationship that was really painful. And the other one having some business issues and stuff like that, like two kind of relationship problems. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I went in there kind of with my ass on fire, almost like checking yourself into rehab. You know, mm -hmm. I was in a bad place. Mm -hmm. Uh, but then it was trippy as I got out and it was like, cool, that was nice. And I got a little relief. But what's been funny is the effects of it have been like, being revealed uh, in an unconscious way. Like, yes. I'm very, very different as a result of having done that process. Right. But it's not like I sit around thinking about it. Like, oh, I have to do the exercise they taught me or this or that. I don't look at my workbook or, yeah. like, consciously reflect on it. It just surfaces. It was a massive shift in self-acceptance and self-love. Mm. And just like, no, I'm, I'm fucking doing this. You know, it's like That's a huge, paramount. huge surrender. Yeah, because everything stems from there and is reflected from that place. You know, the more you can truly self-respect, self-honor, self-worth, self-value, all of those things, like everything else externally yeah. reflects your point, your level of those internal things, you yeah. know? Yeah, absolutely. And it's it makes me happy to hear, I don't want to generalize, but I feel like I just want men in general to like catch up to where a lot of the divine feminine, like where the women, you know, dive into these practices and processes and methods and work. And it's like, I just see the trajectory of like where we're all going with that. And I just like, as a whole, I'm just like, come on guys, like 
please. And so I just thank you for being a man willing to go to an intimacy workshop and like not just that, but to do all the stuff. <laughs> well, dude, do. I, it, I had a, this guy that's been on my show, John Wineland, an incredible teacher. He's uh, of the school of David Data and Way of the Superior Man. So he very much works with the masculine and feminine energy. And mm-hmm. he's been on my show twice. He's one of the top rated guests that I've had. And he's just a very cool guy. And he invited me to one of his workshops. I was like, oh, yeah, no problem. It was like mm-hmm. so gnarly. Yeah. That was, I mean, I'm like thinking like there's not many guys I know that could have hung with that. Mm. I took one buddy with mine because they needed to balance out their male female ratio, and yeah. we we both just ever, at the end of each day we're just like what fuck. the fuck like it was hardcore, uh. you know. I'd like to take like a like really alpha male like badass dude and put him in that environment. Like, mm. can you hang in here? I mean, like a war veteran would have a hard time <laughs> dealing with the level of like open heartedness that we had to withstand, you know, but it's fascinating. And and you know what? I think that, um, this sort of new wave of, uh, I mean, I don't even want to call it feminism. It's like, it's not that it's like the awake woman where you all in this scene seem to be really embracing the power of feminine energy. That's what's needed to bring us men out to bring the best of us out because that competitive, like antagonistic sort of toxic side of, feminism doesn't do that it brings out the worst in the masculine it brings Mm. out the worst in us you know because Mm. then it's like it's um antagonistic you know yeah okay but like we want to honor the feminine Mm, i mean speaking as a guy yeah we Mm. love it we love it yeah yeah and it really does i mean when i've been exploring that like in that workshop i was like damn i need to bring it if I want to have that kind of energy in my environment, I have to be able to hold space for it. So it's really the ultimate challenge as a guy to be able to tap into that feminine, but also to be able to really be strong and hold space. Mm-hmm. Like John refers to it as fierce love. And when he said that, I was like, fuck yeah, I get that. Mm. That makes perfect sense to me. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's cool stuff. So I'm very optimistic about where we are as you know the sexes, at least within kind of the consciousness community in these circles and maybe it's just because i'm in la and like all the guys i hang around are like down with that you know yeah maybe in new york it might be a little (laughs) it might be a little less so but it's like to be a man that's open to all that but still not to be a total like spiritual wuss you know what i'm saying that's the thing it's like exactly there are some guys like and no judgment of them but maybe on the far end of the spectrum in the spiritual scene that like, they're not the guy you want at your house when there's a fire. You know what I'm saying? Right, <laughs> like, right. you know yeah, what I mean? like, <laughs> it's like, don't not bring in that like stability, maybe so much a little airy and, yeah. and whatnot, you know, and yeah. there's a place for that, I guess too. So yeah, yeah, but it's all, it's all fun stuff. It's really neat to explore all that. Mm-hmm. So as um, we come toward the end here, I want to ask you, it was like the first thing I wanted to ask you actually, mm. and I never didn't get to it cause we went down this beautiful rabbit hole, but what's your definition of a shaman because that's mm. that's your thing and it's it's something i know actually little about oddly right for me the way shamanism functions and my vessel and in my life is i am very equal parts connected to earth realm earth plane and also with spiritual realm consciousness plane. So it truly is like I'm walking and I have, you know, one foot in in both worlds. And it is a balance and and that's partially where the name, you know, rock star shaman comes from. There's a whole story with that and a, a journey that I went on to talk to my guides to like, you know, make sure that that was what was for me. But it is the the balance of rock, earth, and consciousness, star, and being just as connected to both of those places. And I, for me, it's very energetic. It's not necessarily plant medicine based. So I recognize that I am an energy gritter shifter for the planet. Like I truly clear out old, ancient, suppressed energy systems and grids that do not serve and cannot continue to function for where the planet wants to go and its own awakening and rise, and also thread and assist in gridding in the new energies and codes and DNA that has been pouring in for a long time. 
and I'll grid that in or those energies that have poured in and have already, you know, found their place into Gaia, I assist in them rising up and finding their place. And so along with all of this energy work and being connected to both realms and being that, so if I'm connected to both realms and then here I am, you know, it's like I'm that, that conduit, that instrument vessel. And with that, I am also clairaudient and very clairvoyant, which is partly why I'm talking right now with my eyes closed. You know, I, I see a lot of the visions when I do readings for people which I don't do one-on-one work very much, but like I'll see the pictures and the messages like over here. I can't look at someone's soul and look in their eyes and, and also get those hits that they're sending down the light beam to me. So I see things, I feel things, I just, I access I access realms and energy and messages and guidance. So w- anywhere I go, whether it's a, a talk or f- filming or working with someone, it's just total surrender. And I just say, you know, I am surrendering this process to you. Please channel through me. I I am your instrument. Please channel through me and work through me whatever messages, guidance, and medicine that needs to be delivered to this person or place. And then I have to chuck the ego out the door, totally release expectation of any kind of outcome, which, you know, can be challenging sometimes, like, especially when you're, you know, groomed to uh, want things to look a certain way, or, you know, everyone, if you're a people pleaser, you want everyone to like you. And like, that doesn't have a space in shamanism. Like, one thing I've really had to to grapple with and I've made really big strides is accepting and understanding that that who I am, the power and light that I have allowed myself to uh, get activated and to become, uh, and the way that I am packaged physically this lifetime, it's triggering to people. The energy can be triggering. Um, the fact that I am a woman and a shaman and, um, you know, come from the Midwest, whatever it is, in a lot of different ways, I can trigger the shit out of people. And I've really had to accept that, that I have to trust. And whatever they're getting, feeling, getting dosed, whatever's coming up for them, I have to just like walk away. Sometimes I, I, in the past, I have cried over it and I'm just like, oh my gosh, like, because I know they walked away being triggered and not liking me and it's few and far between. Hopefully it'll continue to grow where the person actually tries to investigate within themselves, why do they hate me? Why do they dislike me? Why do they say to themselves like, she can't be real because of X, Y, and Z, these these things that I've heard. And um, I just have to keep, walking and keep walking and keep being in my truth and being on my path and letting my light only grow and only get brighter. And I, and I notice when I do that, that's when more of the, the talk comes in, you know, that can be whatever. And, uh, I've had to just really grow to accept that that that's a part of it. I know my purity. I know my heart. I know my truth. And thankfully, I've got amazing family and like friends around me to just, if I am struggling with a thing that happened, they bring me right back to like, you're fucking goddess. Like, you're here. Like, Alice, you know, and whatever it is to like snap me back out of the human, like, ah, why don't they yeah. believe that I, <laughs> yeah. you know. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, yeah. uh, there's interesting pieces of yeah. this journey that have come up that have been a little surprising for me yeah. along the way. Yeah, that's cool. I admire your courage because, yeah, I mean, the, you carry around rocks and crystals and bells and like you got a whole thing going on. Your your work involves uh, a lot of outward facing. Yes, you know, uh, theatrics in a sense, for lack of a better word, because it's just part of the process and part of the work that you do. So, you know, it's not like you can just go undercover and kind of work in the shadows. I mean, you're very much out there. Oh yeah. That's, and what a great lesson in that, right? Because look, it's like opening up all these areas in which for you just to own your space and give less fucks. Every time. And I know that I am creating those situations and scenarios to come in to strengthen. And I just saw a divine. I see, I either get the divine tingles or I see a bright light that comes in. Wow, truth, really? And it just pinged in. Cool. When, it, yeah, it was like right there. Every time that those comments or whatever those things were that came in, I investigate them. I explore them because I, I want to be as 
authentic as possible. And if there's some truth and validity to any of this stuff, I, I want to do that exploratory layer. But every single time, every single time after I feel into it and I'm just like, I might even phone a friend on it to see what their take is. And without fail, every single time, all the nasty comments or haters or whatever it is, it only grows out another layer of embodiment of my truth and my power and my light. So those of you, you know, that say the things, if whatever, that are nasty or hurtful, and you're just not conscious that I'm also a human being, like you're only making my light grow. The power is only growing. Awesome. I love that. I'm going to remember that for the point at which I draw enough attention to myself that I have haters. So far, I, I, at least <laughs> they've not made themselves known. I'm sure they exist, but they have not publicly uh, accosted me as of yet. Oh, gosh. So in closing, I want to ask you my classic episode three-part question. Who have been three teachers or teachings that have helped you in your mm. life that you might pass along to the audience? Uh, could be in any form book movie someone you know personally a teacher mm -hmm. that's passed on a philosophy whatever you want uh, something that our audience can go like look at the show notes or google and like check it out for themselves Pema Pema Chodron comes up for me a lot like her teaching she's just incredible talk about compassion and heart-centeredness and like acceptance of all that is and not resisting or pushing away, you know, certain things and in including it and allowing that inclusion to grow your, your heart center and the oneness and compassion. So she is a teacher that top of mind, top of list for me. My favorite quote is truth is a pathless land. You know, when you start to, like you say, unplug from the matrix and like find your way with your soul purpose and your mission and start to do that surrendering and blind faith, blind trust thing. It's like when you are in that that realm, that that way of living from your truth, it really is a pathless land, you know, that takes all those things that we've been talking about all hour. I just, I don't know, that quote resonates. It's dope. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. I, I say it all the time. I'm like, truth like is a pathless land. Did you know that truth is a pathless land? <laughs> hey, everybody at home, truth is a pathless land. Uh, okay, and then the third. Hmm, Oprah, <laughs> Oprah keeps coming in. Oprah's the queen. Like, Oprah just paved the way. Like, she is the ultimate you know, conscious light worker that was on the grid and, and working in media and letting that light and that truth and that consciousness work, like get beamed out and sent out through all those different media channels, like long before anyone else, you know, long before the, half the population knew the term light worker or mystic or whatever, she was living that. In so such a bold way, coming from where she came from, you know, the different divine packaging and, and design that she signed on for, for this incarnation, like, she's just like queen ultimate light worker. And I think her work resonates so deeply with me because it's a big part of my mission and work too, to, you know, be in television and, you know, my work primarily functions through media. So... I just, uh, I, what she's done and the way that she has paved just uh, speaks to my soul. Oh, I, I, it's strange that no no guest before you has identified her. I'm always surprised when it's like such an obvious one. I'm like, ah, Oprah, like, <laughs> yeah. why doesn't every woman say that? You know, it's funny. Yeah. But uh, cool. Thank you for that. Okay. And then lastly, where can our listeners find you and your work? Uh, mm -hmm. Social media, websites, anything you want to promote, programs, whatever. Give it to us. Okay. Okay. My website is is allisoncharles.com or rockstarshaman.com. I spell my name or my parents spell my name a bit differently. It's A-L-Y-S-O-N, allisoncharles.com. Um, Instagram is rockstarshaman. That's the platform social media wise I'm most active on. Uh, yeah, I, I've got a lot of stuff going on. I'll be in LA uh, late October. I'll be filming more. There's a lot of really exciting projects and development that I can't wait to come back on your show when like some stuff is signed and be like, now let's talk about this. But I, I'm 
pumped about what is in store and what's coming my way. And uh, I'm trying to think if I'm forgetting anything else. I mean, I try to list on the homepage of my website, like the happenings, events, talks, whatever. So if you, if you go there, you'll find it. Well, we're going to link all of that stuff by the time this comes out. So people will be able to click on everything that you talked about and anything else Mm -hmm. we find between now and then. Great. And I guess I'll end on one note, like, it will probably be done, you know, when this airs, but um, just that this work is being honored and recognized more and more, you know, Marie Claire magazine is partnering with me. They have a thing called the next big thing. And we're doing two really special curated events together um, like this coming week and like curated jungle scent, curated jungle tonic to, with cacao to open our hearts before the journey, sound off experience, headphone technology, uh, you know, specially made post journey CBD oil infused bites. And like, I just, you know, the fact that the more and more places are, are like giving the highlight and the applause to people that do this internal work and that are on this path. And the fact that, you know, Marie Claire, the next big thing on the awakening path with Alice and Charles, a guided jungle journey. Like that's dope. Amen. Wow, good for you. Thank That's you. awesome. Yeah, it's such a it's such a strange time we're in because so of, trippy. as the world gets like darker and darker in many respects, there's like this immense amount of light. I mean, I can't yes. even keep up. It's crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. Just like all of these kind of things, where the mainstream media, I think, is seeing the demand, you know, and yeah. that people are really interested in all of this stuff. So it's it's cool when something awesome becomes marketable, just like organic food going into Walmart. <laughs> That shit's Ooh. not in Walmart because Walmart is dope. It's in Walmart because people asked for it. Yeah, And there you go. And it just goes on and on and ripples out like that. So, Completely. So good for you. Well, thank you so much for joining me on the show today. Yeah. And uh, it's funny sitting here in this little closet. It's like, I loved it. <laughs> yeah, it's great. It's actually ended up being a really cool space with no distractions and lots of wires coming out of the wall. It's funny that you guys listening, yeah. if you could see where we are. Well, you could see it on the, the Facebook Live video that'll be posted. But yeah, yeah, thanks so much. I'm glad we got to spend this time. Thank you. You are our incredible incredible and I loved my time being on the show with you. Cool. Thank you. I told you this was a good one, right? If you made it to the end of this episode, you're hearing my voice right now. That means you agree. This was a powerful show for me, man. Listening back to this to do my show notes, I I had the experience of what it was like to sit with Allison in that little crazy weird room that we were in in New York City. I wish you uh, had a video of that. I think it actually, you know what? There probably is a video on my Facebook page because I was uh, I did a Facebook live of it. So there's going to be like a low quality kind of iPad video there, not uh, one of my usual edited beautiful youtube videos of a live podcast but uh yeah it's funny sitting there having the conversation you never really know how it's going to translate to the tape you know what i'm saying i had a feeling we had something special going on and in the moment it was a powerful experience but listening back i was like wow this woman is doing the damn thing and i'm so pleased to be able to bring people like allison to you and deliver that content and that value to your life. So thank you so much again for joining me. I'm going to keep saying this over and over again, like a broken record. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for helping me get to a million downloads. Let's get it up to 2 million. My goal is 2 million by June, 2018. You know how that happens? That happens not only by you subscribing to this show on your app, you got to click subscribe, but that also happens by all of you continuing to share each episode that you enjoy with a friend. That's all you got to do is like email it, text it, screen grab it, put it in your Instagram stories, whatever it takes. Help me spread the word and spread the world of all of these wonderful human beings that I have the opportunity to share with you. Also, leaving a rating and a review in the podcast app is super helpful. That helps my show get up in the ranks of iTunes, which helps me to get bigger and better guests and just get more exposure to what it is that we're here doing. Don't forget to join the Facebook group. Go into Facebook, search The Lifestylist Podcast. Come hang out with me. We've already had Jack Cruz and a bunch of other guests dropping in and saying hi, so it's pretty cool. I don't know what I'm going to do with it quite yet. It's brand new, but if you have any ideas, throw them in there. Uh, I'm going to definitely be doing Facebook lives of, you know, behind the scenes recordings of the podcast and stuff like that. But I really want to focus some energy on that because it's a place where we can all meet. It's not like a direct message on Instagram or get in an email. Although I love hearing from you in any way you want to contact me. I like it over there because everyone can see the conversation and we can all join in because all of you also have brilliance to contribute to the conversation. Okay. 
So, I'm guessing that you're already subscribed to this podcast, but if not, do that right now so you don't miss this Friday's bonus December show with Tyler LeBaron, where we talk about, again, I mentioned it earlier, the number one supplement that I'm into right now. And uh, this is a powerful one. It's, it's it, let's just say, I'll give you a hint, it's maybe the most powerful antioxidant and anti-inflammatory supplement that you can take. And it's all about that. It's an element from nature. So it's nothing new. It's nothing unnatural. It's nothing crazy. It's actually about the most natural thing you could put in your body. It's just a bit concentrated. It is sick. So tune in Friday for that. And then I'll be at you next Tuesday with another episode until the end of the month. I've got two a week. So we are having a party over at the Lifestylist Podcast. Thank you so much. Blessings and goodwill to you and yours. As we wrap up this episode, I'd like to remind you to get over to foursigmatic.com where you can find tons of medicinal mushroom and superfood and super herb blends. They're really easy to use. They taste delicious. They're all organic. They're super chronic, super strong. They're the real deal. You guys know I take them all the time. I'm not playing. I don't just make that up. When I say I use something, I use it literally every day. So get over to foursigmatic.com, enter the code Luke Story, and you will save 15%. When you start adding us stuff up in your cart, you're going to thank me for that 15%. It actually makes quite a difference. So Luke Story is your code. Foursigmatic.com is your website. Enjoy it. <laughs>